All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. Okay, so I do want to, um, you know, uh, express my thanks uh, to Tanae and uh, Linda for this invitation. Uh, so uh, honored to uh, be in the midst of everyone's presence this morning, as well as uh, accompanying such a distinguished uh, panel of, of speakers and entrepreneurs. So whenever I think about uh, corporate, you know, corporate social responsibility, um, obviously I could you know, talk about it from the standpoint of uh, theory and, and what academics you know, say about it per se, um, as well as how you could actually carry it out in a practical sense, right? Uh, as a business owner or as a member of a community. Uh, so with that being said, um, my understanding of corporate social responsibility comes from both of those vantage points. Growing up right here in Detroit, my parents had a collision shop uh, on Livernois uh, between Joy Road and Tireman. Uh, it was called c and Collision from 1977 to 2000 until I was able to, to retire my, my parents. So I, I want to say that perhaps corporate social responsibility starts with individual responsibility, where um, a person looks at how they can not only improve the lives of, of their family uh, through successfully running a business, uh, but how they could find a way to give back. So, you know, that idea of uh, giving back starts with the, the nuclear, the, the nuclear family. How can I be of a benefit uh, to my immediate family? How can I be of a benefit to uh, my community? Uh, how does that impact grow outside of the community to a state level, uh, national, uh, international, and, and global? So. In order to understand that, I think starting where you are, so as a kid growing up in a, in a body shop, um, I understood that when folks you know, got into car accidents, that was pretty good for our family, right? Um, yeah, so we weren't you know, uh, big on people putting salt down on the road, let people, you know, let people slide, let people's cars get rusty, because then they'll bring them to dad's shop, right? Uh, but from that, I understood economics early in life, how economics is how wealth is created and how wealth is distributed. So we started to look at early, early in life that encouraged me to make sure that when we were doing business at the body shop, to do business with other businesses, businesses that could support ours, looking at where we would get parts from, for example, or looking at insurance companies, looking at estimators that would come out and finding ways to engage with them in, in, in uh, a greater, greater uh, uh, way and a greater, having a greater impact uh, on how we would do business and referrals. So I mean, that, that sort of became very common to me where he would say, my friend Snappy, Mr. Snappy, that's who we get our transmission work done with. So make sure you see Snappies. When it comes to paint, make sure you go to this paint supply store, et cetera. And I understood that, wow, if we just continue to engage in business with each other, we're making sound decisions about economics. We are determining how wealth is created and how it's distributed in that respect. Dad pushed me out from uh, considering pursuing you know, the body shop, uh, made me go to school to become an engineer. So he was uh, very adamant about that. Um, so I was able to go to GMI and uh, got educated in engineering and business. But those roots of entrepreneurship continued to drive me because I wanted to realize, you know, how can I develop concepts? You know, what um, product or service could I create from a, having, having that mindset of partnering with others to, to build something, right? So I think from a corporate social responsibility standpoint, when you're thinking about your product or service, you're thinking about other businesses, you're thinking about communities and ways to develop enterprise, like an enterprise mindset um, from you know, your materials to your services uh, to who takes care of your accounting, how your marketing is done, considering others and how do you develop that mastermind alliance, right? Uh, so that's in concept and vision. Looking at corporate social responsibility from the standpoint of solutions. Like yes, my product or my service uh, provides a resource or provides something great to someone that can afford it, but how about those that cannot afford it? How, how about 
you know, the ways that we benefit that could also serve as um, benefit to others. So being creative in that mindset. Uh, the proponents of corporate social responsibility say that uh, whenever you're in position, you know, when you have the revenue and you're uh, profiting as a business, yeah, you should contribute uh, to others. The opponents of corporate social responsibility suggest that your only tie, for the most part, should be to the owners of your organization. Return on investment. How do I ensure that shareholders have more? But the mindset of being an opponent to corporate social responsibility keeps that economics only in a certain realm, which is the top realm, if I'm only concerned about my investors. So growing up where I grew up, there's no way that I could only be concerned about uh, those that had more than me or those that I was in a position to make money for, right? Uh, understanding the perils, challenges um, of, uh, of Detroit and going to school in Flint. I mean, you know, need I say more? So um, I looked at my uh, success and what I was able to accomplish and said, how do I transform this into a business model? What, what would I do, you know? So uh, after I became an engineer, I went off to AT&T in Illinois and became a global service executive. So I was able to see how companies like Aon Corporation, Merrill Lynch, Zurich North America, uh, Boeing, Boeing was one of my clients, I was able to see how these companies had budgets of uh, the upteen millions of dollars a month just to spend in phone service, and how AT&T was not the only service provider. There were minority companies that offered telecom and offered networks and equipment, but could not get a seat, could not necessarily get a seat at the table. Um, so whenever I uh, left, I left AT&T, I took a package and left AT&T, and I started independent consulting uh, to companies uh, to get them to the table. Like, how do we get minority suppliers to the table? Uh, how do we encourage training uh, and development so individuals understand uh, networks? And what I was able to do uh, was develop a model, a model per se, as to how to get to the table, how to create you know, your product, how to, to offer it, whether it's an automated call distributor, right? Uh, whether it's interactive voice response units, whatever that technology is, there's an opportunity to not only offer it to Fortune 100 corporations, but there's small businesses that need those similar technologies and how to, how to help businesses package, package their product. Um, so that was on the technical side as well as entrepreneurial side. I understood that when it comes to promise, you know, how do you create promise? How do you help businesses? to reach that full uh, potential, you gotta create. You definitely have to create something. Create or provide something. Once you create that product or service, you have to grow it, right? So, um, and growing it is uh, looking at ways to reach larger target audiences. So, living in a Chicago land area and serving as a global service executive, I was able to see how do you, how growth takes place, where it's the number of contacts, the number of contacts that you constantly and continuously make. Um, if you look at, you know, 52 weeks in a year, and you say there's 20 explicit tasks that I'm going to carry out this week that help me to contact and reach out to people and complete tasks, if those are 20 tasks in 52 weeks, there's a thousand steps that you've made in a year as an entrepreneur that progress you and progress your organization and progress others. So I learned to create and to grow by spending time doing meaningful tasks. Um, once you create something and grow it, innovate it, change it. It can't stay the same. So you innovate, whether it's your marketing pitch, whether it's your website, whether it's the packaging, the delivery, et cetera, find a way to, to innovate it. Uh, so create, grow, innovate, and network, right? Networking is obviously key, but it's easier to network when you have a product or when you have a service in hand, whenever you're stepping up to the plate and you're able to use references, right? Uh, and then once again, networking back in those communities that you came from. So, you know, that seems to be one of the big challenges that some people have when they create and they grow and they innovate 
They don't necessarily find a way to bring it back, bringing it back to, to zip codes. Um, create, grow, innovate, network, and lastly, demonstrate. Demonstrate the, the competence um, of that product, the competence of you, you know, demonstrate to others how they too can, can do it. So uh, in my line of work as an uh, educator and as an uh, executive as well as entrepreneur, I decided that I wanted to follow those steps myself by creating Dr. Seymour and Associates. We are a, a registered 501c3, not-for-profit. We provide scholarships uh, and grants to teachers because when I struggled, when I struggled in school, a lot of it was due to just not having enough money. That was definitely a problem. Uh, <laughs> just not having enough at all. Aging parents and the responsibility that I knew I had to give back to them. So I knew kids needed scholarships. So when you're thinking about solutions, you say, well, man, if kids are struggling, uh, find a way to get money. If teachers don't have enough resources in the classroom, find a way to not only get them um, resources that they need, but advice and a mentoring network, et cetera. So being very solutions oriented, we've been able to provide uh, dozens of students with uh, scholarship dollars since our inception in uh, 2010 and, and plenty of educators with, with grants. Yes, uh, four minutes? Two, I can do it. 120 seconds, got it. All right. Um, and so providing uh, teachers with, with uh, grants in the classroom and then helping students out, all based up upon me writing and selling my memoir and distributing my, my memoir around the country and around the world. So finding a way to place your product and service not only in areas where people can pay for it, but the social responsibility of taking those proceeds and giving it back, where um, you know, $10,000 scholarship is plenty of money for a, a student, or a $1,500 um, grant for a teacher. It closes the gap on his or her ability to buy, buy resources. From that, I was able to branch out into other areas in view of corporate social responsibility through multiple you know, board leadership appointments, uh, Habitat for Humanity, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, GEI Global, um, uh, Catholic Vantage Financial Credit Union. And when you're at the table from a social responsibility standpoint, um, encourage others. Encourage others to engage. Be the voice of those in those communities that don't necessarily have a seat at the table. And then challenge. You know, challenge the executives to uh, innovate, to, to expand, to grow, to network, and to demonstrate their desire to serve community. Thank you. Yeah.